Welcome to this LibGuide on project-based learning. This resource was created by electronic resource librarian Jim Rickerson and me, Dr. Jason Lee Guthrie, a professor in communication and media studies at Clayton State University. We created this resource as part of our work on a course transformation grant from Affordable Learning Georgia, and it's intended as an open educational resource, or OER, for anyone who wants to use project-based learning in their classroom. On the homepage here, we have some helpful information to orient viewers who might not be aware of what project-based learning or PBL even is and what some of the research about its effectiveness shows us. As we'll see as we look through some of these resources, Project-based learning has been demonstrated to have a significant impact on student success. And that's one reason that I am excited about uh, using it in my classes. I've seen the benefits. Uh, I've seen the way that students respond. And I'm excited to share some of what I've learned with all of you. The core of this site showcases several different projects that I've created for several of the classes that I teach. As I mentioned, I am a professor of communication and media studies, and I teach most of our media production courses. So courses like podcasting, uh, screenwriting, um, uh, I teach graphic design, photography, uh, all kinds of different things. What I've done is I've taken the projects and some of the materials that go along with those projects that I use in my courses and um, put those here in a really organized, straightforward way uh, so that you can use those as a resource if you want to do a project in your class. So let's say you're an English professor who is interested in doing a podcasting project or maybe you are in the sciences and you'd like your students to produce an infographic that displays the results of an experiment, uh, or really anywhere in between on that spectrum, there's a resource here that can help you. Um, I'm just going to go through s several of these um, just to kind of orient you with what's here, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the other resources and where I would like to see this site go in the future. So uh, let's just start with audio projects. When you click on one of the um, choices under sample assignments, it's going to take you to a sub page here, and there's going to be specific assignment sequences under each of those. For the most part, the ones earlier are going to be a little bit shorter sequences, and the ones further along might have a bit more resources with them. Um, but all of these are going to have um, a wealth of different types of materials that you can use in whatever way is best for you. So I've made these materials under um, a true Creative Commons license, meaning that you can use these as is. You can download these and, and just punch them right into your courses if that works for you. I think in most cases, if you are an instructor and you're wanting to use this in your course, you're probably going to want to uh, re-record it in your own voice and likely even modify it to your specific needs. But again, you are welcome to use these in whatever way is beneficial and disregard anything that is not beneficial for your purposes. So just as an example um, of some of the different projects under audio here, I've got a short podcast project, and that comes with resources on um, a PowerPoint on audio basics um, and an assignment that I tend to use um, early in my classes um, where I do a personal inventory with students and get a sense of what their experience level is, what their interests are. Um, I've got a lecture on, um, you know, the kind of the, the culture and history of podcasting. Um, uh, some instructions on how to use a free web-based uh, 
audio editor uh, that is owned by Spotify. It's called Soundtrap. Um, and uh, then instructions on how to um, do an, an interview with each other. And I'll usually put students in pairs for this assignment. And then uh, how to turn that interview by adding some really easy musical elements and a, a handful of other um, uh, production elements into a short podcast. So this is the way, for example, I start my podcasting class to get students oriented and um, help them get their ideas together as they move towards their full project. Um, I've also got a couple projects here um, that are more kind of like radio oriented. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm going to just skip down to the full podcast project down here. And uh, as I mentioned before, you, you know, some of these are going to have a little bit more resources. So um, in about eight steps here, um, there's really just everything that you could need uh, to create your first uh, episode of a podcast uh, and take it all the way to the point of being ready to publish and launch. Um, so I've got, you know, again, with each of these lectures uh, that cover, um, you know, things like um, uh, media aesthetics and narrative structure um, and branding and marketing even um, and a handful of other things. Uh, but then I've also got, you know, specific instructions on uh, ways to um, to get started. So I will often have my students start with a pitch where they just type out their idea. Then I'll have them um, do research and analyze uh, other existing media. Um, there's instructions on here even for how to create a logo for your podcast. And we'll look at some of the other graphic design projects in just a moment. Um, I have them do branding and marketing branding and marketing materials that may or may not be relevant to, you know, a lot of your uh, projects. Um, and then I'll have them do a written outline of the podcast. I'll have them create drafts of a trailer, which is sort of like an intro or a promo. Um, and then I'll have them do a draft of their podcast and then I'll have them turn all of that in, you know, at the end. Um, so if we look through here, um, I'm going to skip down to graphic design. Um, I've got, um, again, focusing on softwares that are free and browser-based, meaning there's no cost to students, and students are able to use them on a range of devices, including even mobile devices and Chromebooks. Um, so instructions on how to make things like a, a quote um, graphic, you know, so, you know, taking a quote from a famous person and using a cool font and different colors and, you know, making it into something that could be posted on a social media. Uh, I'll have my students create their own meme uh, using meme templates, uh, but often tying in, you know, something that we might be talking about in class, like media theory or something like that. Um, how to create a card or a digital flyer, uh, how to create their own logo, and, and again, infographic. And the infographic one, uh, sort of like the short podcast one, is probably one that would be especially of interest to many people who might be watching this video and visiting this site. Um, a couple of others I wanted to highlight. Uh, for anyone that um, might want their students to do something photography-based in their classes, which is obviously really helpful, right? Because all of our students are walking around with an incredible camera in their pocket on their smartphone. Um, I've got a series of uh, first exercises and then projects here that um, this would be a section of the resources that I think would be most useful probably just as is without a lot of um, needed modification. So if you just want to give your students a set of resources, like here's how you can understand the basics of photography and here's how you can grow as a photographer, uh, you could really just send the link straight to this page here and say, hey, work through all of these exercises. So we've got an exercise on using the manual settings of a camera, on composing your shot, uh, what, what we mean by the term perspective in photography, uh, setting focus, uh, using and editing color, and um, using and manipulating lighting. Um, the exercises in my photography class are followed by a series of projects. And, um, you know, as you can see, there's just a wealth of resources here. I've tried to highlight the ones that I think are probably most relevant. I'm very open to your feedback on how these could be improved or how they could be more useful. 
and thanks for watching.